One to take this chance to greet you um, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I believe you have been well and you have been keeping well. And we, I'm glad that we have, um, uh, ha we, have, we have this chance to interact with you as young people, uh, as our teenagers, so that we can uh, continue sharpening one another. Like the way uh, Bi the Bible says that an ion sharpens another ion. And it's very good that we get to sharpen one another through the word of God, even as we get to learn some things that we can take uh, from the word of God and apply them in our lives, which is very, very important because we know very well that the word of God is our map. It is our compass that normally guides and directs us. And so when we get to hit the word of God in our hearts, then we'll not able to go wrong at any point, but we'll able to uh, follow what the word of God says about us, and we will be able to uh, flourish and prosper in everything that we do. But before we get to engage into our today's uh, talk, let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are holy and there's none like you to be worshipped. We thank you because you have granted us, Lord, uh, another chance that we can able to hear from you and we can be able to listen from you. As we get to engage, our, uh, to engage in the talk for today, we pray that you may guide us, you may lead us, Lord, that your Holy Spirit may be with us, that we may, be, we may benefit from what you have prepared, Lord, for us uh, this day. We give you praise and we give you the glory, for it is, your holy, it is in your holy name that we pray and believe, and all the people say, Amen, and Amen, and Amen. Well, today I want us to look uh, at a certain topic. Uh, some other time we looked at peer pressure and we are going to continue with it, peer pressure. But today we are going to look, it, to look at it at uh, a different perspective. And so there's a text from the Bible I want us to read. And that text comes from the book of Luke, uh, chapter 23 and from verse 13 to 23. There are only 10 verses, and if you have your Bible with you, you can grab it and open with me, the book of Luke 23, from verse 13 to 23. And I will read. Uh, it says, Pirate called together the chief priest, the lulas, and the people, and said to them, you brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. With one voice, they cried out, Away with this man, release Barab Barabbas to us. Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Waiting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again, but they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. For the third time he spoke to them, why? What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for death, penalty. Therefore I will have him punished and then release, release him. But with a loud shout, they insistently demanded that he be crucified, and their shouts prevailed. We get to see a story in Luke uh, 13, from verse 13 to 23, of Jesus being presented before Herod. And uh, we get to see that uh, 
Herod did not found any charges upon this man Jesus. And so uh, he was about to release him. But the crowd shouted, you know, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And then again he said that why are you saying crucify him? And I have not found any charges upon this man Jesus. But again we get to see the crowd insisting that crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And so Herod giving, giving to the demands of the people and crucified Jesus. One thing that we get to see is that the decision uh, to crucify Jesus didn't come from Herod. It came from people. Because the Bible query states that Herod could not find any charge against this man, Jesus. But again, because of the crowd, the way the crowd were shouting, crucify him, crucify him, then he was able to give in to their demands and he crucified Jesus. As we continue with our topic for peer pressure, today we are going to look at the dangers of not being principled. And there are so many dangers of not being principled. And so we get to see that being principled is an important uh, element uh, from us as you young people and as teenagers. We need to be people who are principled, not people who are carried by other people's opinions, not people who are carried by what other people say. We should be able to be principled that such that we can able to make our own firm decisions and we can able to stand by those decisions regardless of what people get to say about us and what caused Pilate to succumb to pressure number one is because he lacked courage he didn't have courage to say that I stand by my principles I stand by my decision that this man I have, no, I have not found any charge with him. And so, instead of releasing him, he gave in to the demands of the people and he crucified Jesus. So he lacked courage. And so as young people, we need to have courage. Courage to approach people and tell them that this is not right. We should not be able to engage ourselves in these things because they are not right. We should have courage within us to be able to say no to what is ungodly and to be able to say yes to what is godly. The other thing that made Pirate to succumb to pressure is because he feared the people. He feared the crowd and he wanted to please them. And sometimes as young people, we get to find ourselves doing things so that we can please people. At the end of the day, we get to regret the decision that we, we made because they were not informed decisions. Probably we were being succumbed uh, to pressure to do them because of the people that are around us. But after we have done those decisions, then we come to realize that, wait a minute, I wish I could not have done such kind of a thing. And it is very, 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 very bad to do things in order to please people. Remember that you are a person, you can able to make your own decision, not to please people, but the, to make decisions that will be able to please you as a person and decisions that will be happy about them when you get to uh, think about them and decisions that also will able to please God because one, you will have done something that is right before God and before yourself. So we should not be able to give in to play pressure because of people. We should be able to stand firm by our own decision and stand by them regardless of what people say about us. We can see that Pirate was not principled. He did not stick to his personal conclusions. He did not stand by his values. He went to what people said about uh, 
or the thing that people wanted for him to do. And so he'd not stand by his own principles, his own conclusions, his own values. He gave in to what people were saying. It is very, 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 very bad not to make uh, good decisions that are well informed just because there is pressure from around. He failed to stick to his convictions and he failed to do what he knew was right. Imagine failing to do something that you knew it was right. You know, there's a conscience that haunts you. You know, there's that guilty that haunts you because you failed to do something that you knew it was right and you did not do it. And what does the Bible say is that if you know you are supposed to do something that is right and you don't do it, then that is sin. And so if we know that what we are doing is right, then we should do it without fear. We should do it with courage. We should do it without any intimidations from other people. We should do it regardless of what people will say about us. We should stand firm by our own decisions. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 33 says, Do not be misled, but company corrupts good character. Again, we need to watch who we are associating with. Not all people that we call friends are our friends. Some of them may disguise them as friends uh, only to know that they are our enemies. And so how should we know that we have good friends around us? For example, if you take one rotten potato and you put it in a sack of many good potatoes, what will happen to the other potatoes? Of course, they'll be rotten because of just of that one rotten potato. And so if we mix ourselves in the, in the company of bad people, and as we are good, then we'll become bad as them. And so it is important to watch who we are relating with, who we are uh, having interactions with, who we are engaging with, because we may end up in the company of bad people and we find ourselves doing things that are not right. You know what Psalm says, Psalms chapter 1? It says that blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit uh, in the seat of mockers, but he delights in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. And the Bible says like he is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, and whatever that person does, he prospers. And so we should not associate ourselves with bad company. The book says we should not be able to stand in the counsel of the wicked or sit in the seat of mockers or walk in the counsel of the, of the wicked. Three things. We should not walk in the counsel of the wicked. We should not stand in the, in the counsel of the wicked. We should not sit in the seat of the mockers. Because when we do that, we will become like them. And the Bible warns us not to do so. But when we get to the light in the law of the Lord, the Bible says that we'll be, we yield fruits in, in season, and wh whose leaf does not wither, and whatever he does, that person prospers. Everything that we'll do, we'll be able to prosper because we delight in the law of the Lord. And so we should watch carefully the people that we're associating with because bad company corrupts good character. And peer pressure, it comes to all people. It can be experienced by each and every age, but we should be on the lookout, not to give in to the peer pressure. And one, probably there are some things that make us succumb to peer pressure. There are some things that, succumb, uh, that makes us to succumb to peer pressure. And number one is fear of rejection by peers. You know, we get to fear how will other people say about me simply because I have said no to this kind of a thing. So number one is the fear of rejection by peers. 
and having that desire to belong to a peer or to a certain kind of a group trying to look for acceptance but that should not be the case whether we are accepted by people or not we should not be able to give in to the wrong pressure but we should be able to stand firm and make our own decisions number two that make us to succumb to pressure is lack of courage to stand our grounds imagine a person who is not principled a person who cannot be able to stand on their ground when they are told to do this they get to do it whether they even they don't want to give it a vote whether it is a good thing or it's a bad thing you find themselves just engaging in that thing just because they are, they don't have the courage to stand uh, on their grounds they are ignorant of the consequences that comes after that it is a matter of choice when you choose badly you get to have bad consequences when you choose wrongly you get to have uh, bad consequences but when you choose right you cannot able to regret at, at any given time because you, when you choose right you are able to get good results out of it results that uh, makes you happy as a person and results that can be celebrated by other people and so what should we do so that to resist uh, negative pressure from our uh, people who are around us number one we should be focused a person who is focused cannot able to entertain themselves in a negative pressure because they are focused they know what they want in life and as a young people we can be able to be focused because we know what we want in life we should be focused we should be assertive we should have a vision a vision that drives us a vision that motivates us a vision that we can able to work on it a vision that can make us to remain focused and so when we remain focused as young people we can able to resist negative pressure from us we should be principled we should be people who stand on their grounds people who are firm with their decisions people who are able to say yes to what is right and people who are able to say no to what, to what is not right and so we should be principled as young people number 3 we should be courageous and bold we should not have fear we should be courageous and bold to face everything that comes our way and to be able to stand our grounds as young people we should be ourselves and we should be sure of ourselves we should understand our potential we should understand uh, what we can do as individuals sometimes as young people we tend to to mask ourselves not uh, portraying who we are but it's good to be real to yourself at the end of the day you are doing an advantage to yourself and so when you become real life become easy for you but when you become fake you try to live a fake life you struggle to live a fake life which will not add value to your life but when you become to real to yourself you can able to live a life that is easy a life that other people can able to identify with you a life that can be able to be liked by many so let us become principled people people who are informed by their choices let us not give in to peer pressure from the crowd let us become people who are principled and god will bless us and more so we continue praying that god may give us wisdom and uh, that ability to stand firm on our grounds and god is faithful he is able to help us so may god bless you may god be with you may god uh, help you to be principled person in all that you do and you will continue enjoying the fruits that comes with it may god bless you and i wish you a very good week until we meet again and i'm never lonely i'm many but such an awesome love he is an awesome god and i wanna tell it to the world he live with you anywhere kama si wewe basi nani hiyo landi lodi akokwanjia anataka